here with Professor Eiler right now, and she is going to show us how to uh, caramelize onions. So uh, caramelizing onions is pretty simple, but you have to take your time. So we just put an ample amount of country crock into the frying pan, and you want to start it on a pretty high heat. And you can even add a little bit of sugar, just a tiny bit. It'll give you that like nice crystalline brown look. Um, but then when you have your onions about where you like them, the trick to a beautiful omelet is to remove the onions from the pan. Now Ooh. you have a really crisp pan that's uh, seasoned a little bit with onions. Ooh. And so then you want to apply just so a hungry. little bit more. Lots of butter. Oh, oh my goodness. Coat your pan. And this is just so that our eggs don't stick. This is uh -huh. what I do for our eggs. Now we have a nice hot, hot pan, and we have our eggs ready to go. This is just uh, six eggs, six uh -huh. eggs omelet for two people, and you can just sit that in there. And now the secret to a good omelet is like medium low, but you want to have the pan really hot with oil or butter, and then after the egg is in there for just a few seconds, then you turn it down. That's what, get, that's what makes it easy to flip it over in the pan, you know, like they do on the cruise ships where you wah wah and you have an egg. They, do you know how to do that? I do know how to do that. I don't get it right every time, but I have succeeded a few times. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And now while your eggs are cooking, it would be the perfect time to clean up the kitchen if you are like me and you wanted to clean as you go. But while our egg is cooking, we have a special treat for you today. We're going to show you how to do a perfect avocado. Ooh. Ever want to know how to do a perfect avocado? Yes, I've always wanted to because know how to do it. Because for many people, you screw it up and it's an avocado or avocado no. But <laughs> we've got a good avocado for you today. For me, it's normally an avocado no, so I'm excited to see how you do it. So here we have our avocado. Should I hold this for you? Wait, Lauren's going to be gonna my be trusted the... assistant. Okay, hopefully I don't drop so, it. So when you first have the avocado, it's like this. So people look at it like, how do you cut it? Well, when you take your knife, and even a simple paring knife will do. So basically, you want to go around the avocado the whole way and press in because you want to get to the core where the seed is. Once you have your avocado done, it will open just like this. For real, it will open like this. Then, so you have this in your hand. Sometimes, you know, you actually have to pull it a little because it'll be stuck together. Then you just take your finger and you run it all around the shell and you'll be left with this. So wow. I did this one earlier to show you to give you the visual, right? Yeah. But this one hasn't been done yet. Ooh. It's still fully intact. Like, Let's see it. It's like, it's not, it's still, right? So what you do is first, you take your finger and you loosen the top and then from the bottom, you're pushing and this little thing will just pop out. Wow, and I saved those. So we saved these. You can plant it, you'll have an avocado tree soon. Now we've got the shell around the avocado. So you just take your thumb and you just start loosening it ever so gently. And you just gradually, oh, wow. you know, inch by inch or millimeter by millimeter, you just kind of, you know, run it along the back. And sometimes you get some parts that stick, depending how ripe it is. And you have a beautiful avocado. Amazing. Now, when you get lucky enough to have these, you can actually, like, put uh, eggs in them and bake them in the oven and have, like, a little baked souffle in the thing. So really? Have, so a cool thing to scoop out. Or you can rinse them, and they're great to hold fruit. Um, just a lot of things you can do Do you eat them? It. No, you don't eat the skin. Okay. Nothing you can do it that I found that you can do with an avocado skin, but they make little cute little dishes if you get a good cut. And this is great for your girl. I feed them, yeah, I feed them to my plants. So yeah, that's what I do. Avocado, <laughs> yes! Uh-huh. And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Yes. The perfect morning omelet. Very excited, very hungry right now. Guys, so, so as you can see, the omelet kind of just lift from the pan. Wait, and this is the part I should be I'm watching. I'm trying to show you a little bit. But around the edges, you can see that I can still just run my spatula behind the omelet. Oh, very good. I'm excited to eat right now. Sometimes I get too hungry and I give up and it just becomes scrambled eggs because obviously scrambled eggs are much quicker than omelets. Uh -huh. So somebody asked us what's our view on, on what's going on in politics. I really, it's very sad and I don't generally like to talk about uh, politics, but it's just very sad. Well, I think you have to be really specific. You know, there's USA politics, and then there's global politics, and then you really have to look at what's happening in the EU and countries that are not in NATO, that countries have chosen to remain neutral for many years. That's where the real danger is in today's society, is because they're not protected because they're neutral, and they can still be acquired by a dominating country. So, um, you know, countries that have to remain neutral are our greatest uh, worry in times like this. Because they need protected the most. Yeah. 
So Stuart said, put a lid on the omelet. Well, if you put a lid on the omelet, it gets more like a steamed egg and it, it t changes the texture. Mm. So you can do that and it yeah. does make it cook a little faster, but you can also do the kitchen technique where you just use the entire pan and the more you spread the egg around, the faster it cooks. Oh, we actually have to drive Louisa to the airport. She is leaving to go. Did you, do you have a warm clothes or how do you? Yeah, I have a jacket and my friend will have clothes. <laughs> Another benefit of getting to a healthy weight is that you can share your friend's clothes finally. At this age in my life, I can finally just wear whatever my friends wear. That's great. That's awesome. That's really fun. Oh, good luck, Daniel, with your surgery tomorrow. We're sending you lots of love oh, yes. and prayers. So much prayers for your surgery. I am drinking instant coffee because I'm it's my favorite kind of coffee drink. It just spills hey, it everywhere. A good thing to do for surgery, pre-surgery worries, because being relaxed during surgery is really important to your body. Everything you're worried about, maybe you know what I'm going to say, write it down. Because it removes the worry from the frontal cortex, and it will at least allow some stress relief in the brain. Not to say that you're not going to worry, but it will just reduce the intrinsic worry. Oh, well, that's a good idea. I should tell my father to do that. Then he would just, I don't know, he'd be writing a lot. He's a worry wart. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we apologize. Yesterday we did make a sweet potato pie, um, and we forgot to we forgot to record it while we were doing it. Oh. You know, we made it was really we made good. pie dough from scratch, which is also something we can do in the future. It's a, yeah. good, it's a good thing. My mom said she watched our live stream and she got very hungry. <laughs> so she said, "I was watching you this morning and I got so hungry." We still have fish left over if you want to have fish on the side, actually. Um. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Brian said, has she read Eckhart Tolle? Yes, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, Happiness is a Journey, yes. Mm -hmm. Daniel said, getting the surgery doesn't bother me. That's good, that's good. Thank you, Marvin, I have glasses on, just cause I'm lazy. I have to order new contact lenses, that's for sure. I have to do that probably today. Um, for sure, this is ready. We could try and flip it. I mean, oh. it's, it's moving. All right, I'm scared. It's moving. All right, you're gonna do it? It's a little heavy. You guys, share this. No, normally when they flip, it's got like one or two eggs. This has six, but you know. Oh boy, I'm worried. The point is, you would give it a good go, and if it didn't have six eggs in it, your omelet should really just lift from the pan like this. This is the, you know, it should totally lift over completely like that if you're cooking it right. So you see how easy that was to lift over? No stickings in the pan, even an older pan. I mean, this was not like a brand shiny new pan. It's about having the pan the right temperature. Mm. What are the best pans to cook with? What are your favorite? Oh, ceramic is nice, porcelain is good. Even if it's an older pan, as long as you can't see the lines of aluminum through the coating, um, it's still safe to use. But when somebody has taken a bunch of metal spatulas or knives to the bottom of the pan and you can see the aluminum through the coating, that's when it's really not ideal to use because some of the, the metalene in the, uh, in the pan can get into your food. Mm, I didn't know that. But I checked Lauren's pan and it's good to go. Good. Omar said, I'll eat it. <laughs> so now we've just added some caramelized onions and I'm gonna add a little bit of Italian seasoning because mm. I think everything's better with Italian. Oh, but wait, there's more. And <laughs> the creme de la creme, we have some Mexican style cheese. My favorite is cheese. So it's just, it's got the quesadilla, it's got the asadero. So you can decide, like, I'm just gonna kind of fold this in half and make like a onion and cheese omelet. So oh. celebrating Mexico and Italian and uh, in Italy today. <laughs> Now the oh my goodness. The wow. difference between an omelet and a frittata is really just how you make it. So if you were wanting to call this a Mexican frittata, you would have just put the onions and whatever other vegetables you want in the bottom of the pan and then put the eggs on top of them. Mm. And that's really essentially how you make a frittata. But today we have made, voila, a beautiful omelet. This was six eggs. I like to do like three eggs per person. You know, you need all those proteins because an egg has about seven grams of protein. So a three egg omelet is about 21 grams of protein. This should last us and keep us full and fueled for about four hours. Somebody said, is it breakfast or dinner time? It's uh, <laughs> 9.22 a.m. where we are. So. so some people eat breakfast or dinner at different times, but you know, today we're calling this breakfast. But mm -hmm. we might have it for dinner, because it's good. Eggs and beans, ooh, delicious. Mm. 
Well, I know we have to rush to the airport, so yeah. she should probably say goodbye. But guys, uh, where can they follow you everywhere? Oh, at LouisaEiler.com. And uh, if you need some therapy, you can go to LifeLoveAndLessons.com. There's nine episodes that simulate nine weeks of therapy. Oh, maybe I need to watch this. I didn't know you had nine episodes yeah. of therapy. Yes. Every time, guys, every time I have a problem, I just call her up. I'm like, Louisa, can I talk to you? And she's like, well, I'm doing dishes, but okay. <laughs> yes. And Lauren's so nice. She's like, I have to share you with the world. So brought to you by Lauren and a delicious omelet. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. Happy I love you. We'll see you later when I have uh, more makeup on and have woken up. Bye.